Hello and welcome to Bureau's video lessons. Today we start talking about biology, but not. We will start talking about water, which is very, very important for biology, is very, very important for life. So, what makes water to be? That's what we are going to be doing today. We will see water properties, why those properties are important for life, and what in water make it to have those properties. So let's start with being a good solvent. Water is a very good polar solvent. It means it dissolves polarized stuff. And it dissolves polarized stuff very well because it is polar itself. We saw this in the hydrogen bones classes that uh, water molecules are polarized. They have slightly negative size on the oxygen, slightly positive size on the, po on the hydrogen. And because it has sides, it is very good to dissolve stuff. Let me show you with this example. A crystal of sodium chloride is a very tough stuff. For you to have an idea, to melt sodium chloride, you need more than 1000 degrees Celsius of heat. No, it needs to be very, 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 very hot to be able to melt it, to just make sodium chloride to start moving around. But in the moment you put in water, it disappears. It dissolves. Why? Because the slightly negative oxygens, they surround the sodiums, which are positive, and the slightly negative hydrogens, they surround the chlorides, which are negative. So when they get surrounded, they get separated, they get isolated, now they can move around, they have been solubilized, they are dissolved. <coughs> so water is very good to dissolve Polarized stuff, things that have charge, things that are polar, they dissolve it very well. It is the polar solvent that we know in life is the biological universal solvent. Okay, life as we know enough uses water as the solvent. Okay, just to name some examples: cytoplasm, blood, urine, gas, juice, saliva, <coughs> you name it. In a living thing, if it's liquid, it's very likely to be a lot of water with some stuff dissolved in it, because water is a very good polar <coughs> solvent. Another important property of water is its cohesion. So, cohesion is because the water molecules are cohesive. They, they like each other, they stick to each other. And we saw this also before. Why water molecules stick to each other? Because they are polar, because the oxygen is slightly negative, the hydrogen is slightly positive, so they make hydrogen bonds. PPP, three, point, three points, water make hydrogen bonds between them. So as a result, water can be very cohesive. It allows some animals, small animals, like insects, to walk on water. It allows as well for us to pull one to pull other molecules just behind it. So if we pull a straw, no, we create suction and we pull one water molecule, we pull others. And the same happens with the transpiration pool in plants. When the water evaporates on the leaves, creating a negative pressure on the leaf, it creates a suction on the water molecules that are in the xylem, it creates suction and pulls water molecules all the way up through the xylem. Okay? Just to illustrate this, if we pull one, you pull the others just after that. And this is cohesion. And what causes the cohesion? Hydrogen bonds. Here we can see you no know, hydrogen bonds uh, between water molecules. This is what causes cohesion. But there's another property of water, which is adhesion. Adhesion is very similar to cohesion, but cohesion is when you no know, similars are attached to each other, they are glued to each other, they are, they are attracted to each other, like water to water. Addition is when something is attracted to something different. So in this case here, uh, water will have a very big addition to glassware, to paper, in the xylem wall, for example. So if you put water in the xylem wall, the tendency is for it to stick to the wall, and it makes a tendency for it to stick and climb up the wall. If you wet a tip of a paper, the water start climbing the paper. Why? Because of adhesion. Okay, one classic example of this adhesion, you know it is the volumetric cylinder. When you put water in the volumetric cylinder, we see that bubble. 
the bubble actually is the water going up on the wall on the on the borders and down because of gravity in the middle so this is caused by adhesion the water is adhering to the side of the cylinder and again why adhesion because of its polarity because of hydrogen bonds and because of that that you already saw it's very similar to cohesion another property of water is that it has a very high specific heat capacity Ooh, fancy what does that mean it means that it is difficult to cool down or to warm up water it's required a lot of energy to warm up water it's required a lot of energy to cool down water so you need a lot of energy because water is capable of holding heat very well and why that happens <clears throat> because of hydrogen bonds if you move one that molecule is you know, touching other water molecules that will move together so for you to vibrate more one water molecule you need to vibrate all the others that are holding hands with them the cohesion of the water by hydrogen bonds make them to be very difficult to change this vibration if they are all vibrating if you try to stop one it's difficult if they are not vibrating much if you try to vibrate one it's also difficult so it takes a uh, lot of energy for it to uh, change its uh, temperature as a result water is very good to take out heat through perspiration when water evaporates in our sweat it takes away heat with that that's a very good a consequence of this property and as well water environments tend to be much more constant if you've had the experience of going to the beach during the day and during the night in the same day during the day the sand is very hot the water is cold but if you go in the night the sand feels cold and the water feels hotter not hot but much no hotter than it, it felt in the in, during the day but actually it doesn't actually the temperature of the ocean almost doesn't change from you no know, from day to night what happens is that the the sand the solid changes a lot of temperature but the water stays constant water bodies tend to have a much more constant temperature it's difficult to change temperature of water okay other impro important properties of uh, water ice floats and that allows polar bear and other animals to have a place to live yay very good so why ice floats why is uh, ice is a weird chemical different from most chemicals that colder they are denser than when they are hotter like iron no uh, uh, a solid piece of iron is denser than melted iron which is hotter <clears throat> if you put a solid piece of iron it will sink in molten iron uh, the opposite happens to ice solid ice which should be denser than liquid ice actually is less dense because of the arrangement of the molecules and because less dense it floats and this will be very important creating habitat for animals like polar bears another property of ice is that it's a very good insulator it means it isolates stuff from changing temperature it doesn't give temperature very well it just lies like water but ice is even worse to exchange uh, heat and if you put those two together this makes something amazing no the ice floats stay on the top of the lake it's the, the part that freezes fast because it's the part that's in contact with the cold air and the ice on the top of the lake insulates the water underneath it and keeps the rivers and the lakes frozen on the surface but liquid underneath the ice so the lake doesn't freeze all the way to the bottom the river doesn't doesn't freeze all the way to the bottom so you can have life living in an unfrozen temperature below, you know, above zero degrees celsius under the ice under uh, the, 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 this uh, layer of ice in lakes and rivers and even oceans so these are, are very important properties of water and ice another important property of water that is transparent and because it's transparent it allows underwater photosynthesis 
it allows underwater vision. It even allows our eyes to see because our eyes have a humor in the middle of it, which is a liquid, and light passes through it. So being transparent is also important. I would say mainly for photosynthesis. Most of the photosynthesis on this planet happens in aquatic uh, environment by phytoplankton, and it only happens because water is transparent. Okay. <clears throat> I mentioned this briefly before, but now we are going to be comparing methane to water. Okay? Methane, molecular mass 16, water, molecular mass 18. So as you can see, small, very similar in mass uh, molecules. Methane and water are very, 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 very similar. However, look at the specific heat capacity of water. It's necessary 4.2 joules to change one gram of water, one degree Celsius. But you need only 2.2 joules to change one gram of methane by one degree Celsius. So it's almost half. You need half the energy to change the same mass of, of, of methane than what you need to change water. You need twice as much energy to change one degree cells of water, one gram, then you need for methane. Okay, as a result, the melting point of water is zero degree Celsius. The melting point of methane is minus 182 degrees Celsius. Very, 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 very negative. You need very little energy to melt methane, but you need a lot of energy, zero degree Celsius temperature to be able to have liquid water. And the boiling point of methane is 160 degrees Celsius negative, while the boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius. You need much, 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 much more energy to boil water than you need to boil methane. So this is because water is polar, hydrogen bonds keep the molecules together. To vibrate one, you need to vibrate the others together. And methane is a polar. You vibrate one, the others one don't give a damn. So that's it. This is a good comparison of methane and water. I hope you had fun and I'll see you in the next class. Please do your quiz to exercise and to try to remember this in the future. Bye-bye.